So I'm going to start creating the color scheme picture inside Photoshop. This is where we started off last week. If I have this image that I've cropped using the crop tool on the left hand side, um, I also had an opportunity to show you <coughs> using uh, the canvas size right here and adjust the width so you have twice the width making sure that you adjust the anchor point over to the right hand side allowing an extra area of space to place a copy of this picture right here so if I go into layers there's my current background I'm going to double click and title this I right there now if I go ahead from the menu in the corner right here and choose duplicate layer I will now have a copy of that with that copy selected the blue meaning that layer is selected I can drag this over and drop it over to the left hand side I mean that's probably pretty much where we got up to so don't forget that I want you to uh, you can lock this right here you can lock this one right here so you don't work it on top of them and then we're going to create a new layer now this is then going to be the skin that I'm going to paint on. The tool I'm going to use is my brush tool, or the letter B on the keyboard. What I want to remind you of is that we're going to obviously be painting on here with a very specific color. So I want you to choose uh, colors from your uh, color wheel as far as a specific set of colors. So you might do complementary colors, you might do um, triadic or um, primary or secondary colors. If I was to do primary, I would obviously pick blue, yellow, and red. And then I would have to decide, well, which areas right here are of a light shade. In other words, the, the lightest object or the lightest color would be the yellow. The eyebrow would probably be the red, and this would probably be the blue. So my first option is obviously to go choose the brightest yellow. <clears throat> as you can see here, I'm working with a specific value right here, so to make it maybe easy on me, I could go choose 60. This has to stay constant. The shade or the saturation right here and the brightness can fluctuate. As you can see, this goes down and the B goes down. On saturation, that value goes down and it gets wider. So one's a tint, one's a shade. So I'm going to start with 100% saturation, 100% brightness. I'm going to then move up to my brush and then start to adjust this appearance right here. The size of the brush is how big you see the circle on the screen. And you can slide that up and down to make it larger or smaller. The hardness is then how it appears, whether it's got a soft edge or a hard edge to it. 100% so is completely hard chiseled edge. 0, which is what you're going to use to blend colors together, it's going to be 0%. So it's going to have a very soft edge. So I'm going to work with 100 right now. And what I'm going to do is then start working with my brush in that yellow. And I can start brushing over. I'm actually doing that all over the eye. Now right here I have opacity set very low. So I'm going to push that back up. And I've got this set to a slightly higher value too. But I can basically start to brush over, trying to follow the shape of my skin. I'm going to go over later, and I can turn off areas with the skin and come back and work on the eyebrow on a different layer. So right now I'm just going to very quickly come down this straight line right here. I'm not going to necessarily worry about my ear and my hair for just now. If I hold down control as I go vertically down, oh sorry, shift, I'm going to hold down shift as I go vertically down, it actually stays with a completely vertical line, so I can paint that in there. Okay, now that doesn't look like I've actually done very much right now, but if I go ahead and now turn off the visibility of my skin, and back to that. Now I'm going to go place a layer over the top of that, and then I'm going to title this skin shading. This is going to be the area in which I now start to actually apply shading over my eye. 
So now I want you to go and actually choose a color that is obviously darker than the current yellow I've got right here. I can do that by changing the brightness. Obviously, as you can see, this vertical bar right here starts off with 100% brightness. And the more that I bring it down, it starts to darken that color. So I'm going to go for about 20% less, so it's darker by 20%. And now I've got that color I can start working in on the skin shading layer. This is where I need to now adjust the hardness of my brush all the way down to zero right here so that I get a very soft edged brush and I can also change how much of the flow is actually flowing out there. So I'm going to make sure I have soft edge and I'm to reduce my opacity so I can control it. Now as I start to move in there you can see that I'm adding more content to that. So when you put it over the top you're going to see that it starts to darken these areas. So I'm going to have shading right here. And if I want to decrease or increase the size of my brush, I can use the right and left brackets to start brushing in other areas right here. So I want to just completely cover over the areas that are darker, continuing to work with this softer brush right here. <coughs> So now if I went and chose a darker color still, so I'm going to take the brightness down another 20%, and I'm starting to darken. So I'm going to keep adding darker areas right here, here, underneath the eye, and just trying to blend in as much as possible. If I reduce the flow and the opacity up top, I get much more control on my actual brush work. This is something you need to continue to improve on and work with to get better at. And as you can see, it's starting to build up. So I'm going to go darker again by another 20%. So now I'm down at 40. This is the only number you need to pay attention to right here is the brightness. So I'm going to continue to darken. I'll probably put a little bit of darkening right here. Under the eye, I could start to actually a little more shading with a smaller brush. If I turn that off, I can see that I need to add more. And I can obviously always work on the one opposite right here to actually get a good idea of what's going on, where I need to apply more content. I'm go darker one more time. This time I'm going to go down to 30%. If I go for a very large brush, it's going to darken that whole area a lot quicker, and it's a softer kind of appearance. Okay. So I can also go ahead and do the opposite of that. So if I go back to this, drag it all the way back up to the top, so it's back to 100% brightness, now I'm going to change the saturation, and I'm going to bring that down to about 80 now I can actually start working on the highlight part. So now you can see this is the opposite. So this is the tint, which is actually a lighter version of that first yellow. Okay, so I'm doing a very soft brush in this area. I'm going to try to change it again. I'm going to bring it down to like 60. And look for the highest light point. So I'm going to put some in right here. And just continue to drag over the top of the lighter areas smoothing and blending that together, creating a nice smooth blend. So if I now pull this back, you can see I'm actually trying to lighten up these areas. Go even lighter still. I'm closer getting to white, so I'm going to want to keep adding this. I could increase my flow if I want to do it a little faster. Even increase my brush size to work with that too. So the bridge of my nose right here is obviously fairly light, and I can come back over and you're working on that. So if I want to go back, undo, to undo it once is undo, which is command Z. To get back more than once is option and command Z at the same time. So I'm going to continue to lighten up my brush one more time, getting very close to white, putting in those areas right there which are the lightest points. 
pulling back this picture so you can actually see what I'm actually working on. So you can see I've created shade, I've created light, and I've got that in the original yellow behind. So if you wanted to obviously continue to create lighter points up top on the bridge of my nose, right here. Now I've got certain areas right here that are a little lighter, so I can maybe put in a little touch right here right along the base I'm going to create that lighter point smaller brush still and just create the edges right in here too I can add a little highlight so you're actually painting on color, light and dark shading over the top <coughs> again I can lighten this up even more go even wider I want to try and just paint this on as best as possible. Remember, I'm using a brush right now that has 0% hardness, so it creates that nice soft blend. If you were to accidentally use a hard brush, you can get a very different look, so please be aware of what you need to change. Uh, we'll just lighten up across the top a little bit more where it's the lightest point. And just kind of smooth and blend as much of this as put together as possible. Then I can start doing the same on a new layer with my eye. So I'm going to start with a new layer. And I can click eyeball. And I can hide these two. And then I can start working over the top on my actual eye. Now this is obviously a very light point, so I can obviously work with this pretty much the same color right here and continue at this point, but I would probably work with a hard brush on the eyeball level. That's too big, so I'm going to reduce it down. And continue to actually create that shape. Now if it goes beyond, that's fine, because I'm actually going to tuck this under the layer underneath. So I'm going to increase my opacity so I can actually get oops, so I can actually get nice strong flow out of this. I want to actually add uh, some text, well not text, just some shading on the eyeball to give it the appearance of the fact that it's actually a sphere. So if I hide that, start a new layer, and you can do as many layers as you want, eyeball shading. So if you'll notice, it's a slightly darker color right here. So I'm going to bring this back. And I could even drop this down a little bit to get a darker kind of color. So I'm actually going to want to do that right there. But I want to change my hardness. And I want to probably change my opacity and my flow. So it's a very subtle change. So you can see right there, only just am I starting to apply kind of color in here. So when I put back on there, you'll start to see a change. Start very light with your shading, and the more you brush over it, the better you'll get. It's easier to go and do small amounts right now than do huge, drastic amounts of color change right up front. So I just want to go change this a little darker, right up top. So when I put this back, it's starting to give an idea right here of actually applying shading. <coughs> and create a little bit more dimension to my actual eyeball. Now if I turn on those other layers, and pull this eye part below, and then you can obviously start to see that it's actually making those shapes. So I've got to obviously fill in a couple areas right here so that it doesn't look so unusual. I've got to fill in that area right there with that color. I can use Alt key, hold down Alt, and actually sample the color that I want, and then continue with. Continue and actually just fill in the spot right here. So, come back a bit here. so you need to consider which layers you're going to use, which colors you're going to use, and 
this is the part that I want you to spend most of your time concentrating on the brushwork, refining, getting the detail out there, uh, the shadowing, as well as the upper eyelashes. What would you have to do to create eyelashes on the eyebrow? I'm not going to be done on the scene, but I'm using a small brush. Look how that edge to it. Continue to actually build up until you actually have an eye fully finished and detailed. See what you can do with what I've shown you and keep working on multiple different layers. You can turn on, turn off, and actually see a difference. If you need to at any point, you can use the erase tool. And I can actually then cut away using the same kind of brush system to actually chisel or cut away the shading. So try using these first few tools, the brush, the eraser, to actually help in your construction of your image. This is our first project, so don't get frustrated or upset about it and how it turns out. It's basically a good way to start using a brush tool, to start understanding how this program works with shading and the application of color.